Is this on? Okay. Hi, my name is Ali. I'm the technical lead at GridX, uh, based in London. And I'm here to talk to you about an on-chain order book protocol, which is what we believe will be the catalyst for DeFi mass adoption. No? Um, okay. That's too far. Okay. We, so we are, we are, oh my God. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Does this want to work? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Technical pains. Okay, here we go. So GridX is the first ever fully on-chain order book protocol on Ethereum. Now to understand why that's such a big deal, we need to look at the argument between using an order book and an AMM for a DEX. Okay, so up until now, okay, fully on-chain DEXs like Uniswap would use an AMM model, that's an automated market maker. While other DEXs and KEXs such as Binance and DYDX would use an order book model. Now, we need, to ask our, we need to ask a question, why is this the case? Surely, if one of them is, is better, one of them has, has an advantage in some way, then um, that surely must determine which one they use. Okay, so the AMM is more of an on-chain compromise, okay? It's a compromise to make the gas cost um, effective. Now, I would say so that the gas doesn't cost an arm and a leg, but you can still get that um, when volume is, is high. So I, I won't say that, but this would really cost, this wouldn't cost an arm and a leg, this would probably cost your entire existence. Um, so let's look at, this, this is the type of the exchange that we're familiar with, okay? So this is your, your typical KEX, okay? This is the, the real life equivalent of this is something like the New York Stock Exchange, okay? This is what an AMM looks like, much simpler. Okay, you've just got two tokens, you pick which, you know, which way to swap it, you connect your wallet, you press swap, and boom, you're away. This is the real life, well, the real life equivalent of this would be um, the money changer on the corner of the street, okay? You just go in, I've got some pounds, I want some euros, they you know, give you a rate, and you, you give them your pounds, they give you euros. Okay, so let's look at what do we need in a DEX, okay? So at GridX, we thought about this, and we realized that there are basically two key components to create the DEX that DeFi needs. Okay, first of all, it needs to be on-chain. Second of all, it should use order books. So first of all, let's, let's discuss why does it need to be fully on-chain, okay? First of all, decentralization. The only way that you're going to get a truly decentralized DEX is if everything is on-chain for everyone to, ver to, to verify, okay? Second thing is, is uptime. So if you're fully on-chain, as long as the underlying blockchain is functioning, your DEX is functioning, okay? Well, say for example, if you've got, um, you know, or some sort of computation off-chain like order books, then, um, that's in a centralized facility, let's say that, that catches fire, someone shuts it down, whatever, your, your DEX is now not operational, okay? So the other thing, and this is more of a, um, a thing to do with the friction with, with using um, something that is not fully on-chain, is that you need to deposit or withdraw, okay? Well, with a fully on-chain DEX, like Uniswap, for example, you just connect to your wallet and you're off to the races, okay? Listing. On a fully on-chain DEX, it's permissionless. You want to create a pool? Create a pool on Uniswap. Okay, while on, on other DEXs, you need to, you know, find some sort of, con you know, maybe email the, the creator, you know, coordinate with them to make a trading pair. And the most important one is composability, okay? If all of your smart contracts are live on-chain, okay, anyone can come along, you know, they, they, they might have some, you know, great, fantastic idea that you've never thought of, they'll come along, implement your, your smart contract, well, um, compose on your, build on your smart contracts, and that's, that's really what got DeFi going, you know, using these different protocols like Lego bricks to make something great. You can't do that with other DEXs, well, you, at least you need to cooperate with the with the owner, okay? They might give you an API, that API needs to be, be maintained. If it doesn't, if it isn't main, maintained, you've got a problem, so it's a lot more permissioned. Okay, now let's look at 
So, okay, you can have, we need a fully on-chain DEX. Uniswap does that, but Uniswap's an AMM. So why do you insist on not having an AMM? Well, let's, let's, let's look at some of the AMM pain points, okay? If you're a liquidity provider and you're providing liquidity to any volatile pair, anything other than a stable coin pair, you're going to be prone to impermanent loss, okay? You're always going to have high slippage because you're always going to be a taker. The reason why you're always going to be a taker is because you've got limited trading functionality. Like I said, it's a money changer. All you can do is, I, you know, I've got this currency, I want to swap into that one. So you can only have taker orders. So, you, okay, you might think, okay, why has no one implemented an on-chain order book? The, the answer to that is simply gas, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna see how um, you know, a traditional order book works, and you would see that the, the, the computation would be insane to have on chain. So is there a way to reduce the gas consumption of an order book? The answer is yes, okay? And GridX achieves this, not only achieves it, but we actually bring the gas cost down to the same levels, if not lower, than AMMs. So that's quite a bold claim. You might ask, how do we do that? So before we answer that, let's look at how a normal order book works, okay? So say, for example, you go on a KEX like Binance, they use a central limit order book. This relies on limit orders and a matching engine. This matching engine, basically, you come in as a taker, I want to make a market swap. Um, it matches you up with a maker, someone who's put in a limit order, and, you know, to execute the swap. The problem with that is that it's very complex, okay, and involves a lot of resources, a lot of computation, and it's got a variable overhead, okay, because this needs to check every single maker for a match. So the more maker orders that you've got, the, you know, the more bloated the, the whole system is. So what do we do? Okay, we've, we've reimagined an order book. We came up with the grid maker order book model. This relies on maker orders, and instead of a matching engine, relies on our grid price linear movement algorithm. Okay, what's the upshot of this? It's much simpler, involves very, very minimal resources, and key, most, the most key point is that it's a fixed overhead. It doesn't matter if we've got one maker order, a million, 10 million, the gas cost will be the same. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, the crux of the grid maker order book model is that instead of, you know, say, say I'm, I'm a maker, instead of coming in and say, I want to buy or sell at this price, instead I'll come in and say, I want to buy and sell within this narrow range, okay? And this range would really be narrow, it'd be like 0.01%, okay? And we would allow you to place orders of any size and in any price range with zero slippage, so no slippage outside of that price range. Okay, and we'll reward you with negative fees for essentially providing liquidity to the order book. So how do we do this? Let's look at the a typical case of the GPLM algorithm. Okay, let's say we've got this range, okay? And let's assume that we've got the current price at the lower boundary. Maker orders are coming in. These maker orders get bundled into a bundle which we'll call B0, okay? Now let's say a taker comes in, okay? And as long as that, that taker's order is less than the total amount in that bundle, what it will do is the taker will see this bundle as essentially just one maker order. And every single maker order in that bundle will be filled proportionately, okay? Once that's been tapped into, any new maker orders that come in will be bundled into the next bundle, which would be B1. And this would continue so long as the current price which increases linearly, hence grid price linear movement, um, as, as long as the current price is within that current range. So once B0 is exhausted, then it'll start tapping into B1, new maker orders would be in B2, et cetera, ad infinitum. Um, once, it, once price leaves this range, then the whole process would start over again with B0. So these are some of the grids that we would provide. So you can either have, uh, um, ranges with resolution of 0.01% or 0.3%, etc. So let's look at, okay, how does this actually add up on chain? So you can see that with a swap in one of our grids, okay, the, the, the gas cost is actually on par with the swap um, in a Uniswap V3 pool. 
and placing a maker order is almost three times as cheap as adding liquidity, and collecting a maker order is, is about half as cheap, as um, half as expensive as removing liquidity from Uniswap. So you can try us out, we're on testnet, you can go to d5.xyz, and this is what you'd get. This is the DEX that we need, and this is the DEX that we now have. But GridX is more than just an on-chain order book protocol. So coming in Q1 of 2024, GridX POS is going to be launching. What is GridX POS? It's a cross-chain order book protocol. It's a layer zero blockchain, supports all of your favorite layer ones and layer twos, but most importantly, supports Bitcoin. So for the first time since Satoshi wrote his Bitcoin white paper, you would be able to natively trade Bitcoin, native Bitcoin, no bridges or any trust required. So the GridX protocol, though, will be deployed on Ethereum mainnet and all your favorite layer twos um, in just a few weeks. And you can visit gdx.org to find out more. Thank you.